Hey, what's up? I'm Johnny Chops. I play bass with the Randy Rogers Band, and uh, I also play guitar in Johnny Chops and the Razors. But we're here to talk about my bass rig today. This is my main axe right here. It's a Fender Reggie Hamilton Signature Jazz Bass. Um, I really like this one because it's got a P bass pickup and a jazz pickup. Um, they're active, and you can control them. Uh, it's got treble bass and mid and then it's got a blend you can go back and forth and a volume here which is really nice um, it's an 18 volt active pickup so it takes two batteries which I realize is kind of cheesy to put batteries in a bass but man it's just so versatile and it gets such a great thick tone that I can mess with if I need to um, it's great for being on the road because some rooms sound good some rooms sound like crap and so you can adjust it a little bit um, and then I got a little hip shot tuner up here for a quick uh, drop detuning, which I use on a couple of songs here and there, not a lot, but it's nice to have just in case. Um, if you're in a band with a singer who sometimes like to change songs on the spot without telling anyone, that's good to have because you never know. But um, this is my main axe on the road. I've been playing it for, I don't know, 10 years probably. It was affordable, got a great price on it, and it's reliable as hell. It's a fender. I generally keep it pretty split between the two pickups. I tend to ride the P bass pickups a little bit more for the majority of the show. They have a little bit more beef and punch to them. Um, but this one, the jazz bass gives it a nice kind of mid rangey high mid range tone. Um, so for certain stuff where I want to, if I come up higher, um, kiss me in the dark, I usually roll it back just a little bit more. Um, that's kind of got like a poppy sensibility to it. So it cleans it up a little bit. And then um, I'm a huge fan of DR Sunbeam strings. It's the only strings I've been using for a really, really long time. They are a 45 to a 105 gauge. Um, so it's kind of a medium light gauge, not super heavy. But uh, they hold it for a long time. I really don't change strings all that often, maybe once every six months. I'm not a big string changer guy, um, but they do tend to go dead after about six months or so, which I kind of feel like for a set of strings is pretty solid. It's six months out. Um, this one's just a, really a backup. Um, I don't play it too much. Um, but it's a cool bass. Uh, it's got dust all over it. You can see how much I play it. <laughs> but uh, it's kind of like a Swiss Army knife of basses. Um, it's a Jaguar. It's a 9 volt active, just one, uh, one 9 volt battery in the back. It's got a nice little switch. It's easy to get out. The other one has screws. That one just pops out with a little lever. It's kind of cool. And this one has got two separate, it's got a series parallel switch, which runs um, the pickups either on one line or you can separate them, volume and tone. Um, these actually turn each one on and off. So up is this pickup on. You can also turn it off if you just want to have that one on. And this is series parallel. This is bass and treble for the active circuit. Um, you can also disengage the active circuit if you just want to run passive, which is kind of nice. If you're out of batteries or you don't want to mess with it, it still sounds pretty good um, on the on the passive circuit too. Bass and treble knobs there. I don't play this one too much, but it does have a good sort of growly tone, and it's got a really flat neck. I don't know if you can kind of tell if you're into the like real slim neck profile, which sometimes I kind of like. Um, it's nice for that, and I love the block inlays on the fretboard. I think they look cool. Uh, and this one was also pretty affordable. It's a good Fender bass, and it's a little bit different than your standard jazz or key bass. And we should probably talk about this because it's actually a uh, long-term loaner from Gibson. I haven't been playing it lately, but this is a Thunderbird. Um, it's a really funky bass. Some guys, you know, some guys don't like them because they tend to be a little heavy on the headstock. They tend to kind of do that number when you play them. But it has this really cool sort of mid-range punchy thing. Um, that I really dig and uh, the mahogany also the mahogany body kind of gives it a unique tone um, They loaned this to me Probably seven or eight years ago and said, you know, just keep it and play it every now and again And they've been super nice about letting me hang on to it So if anybody at Gibson is watching this, thanks. I still have your bass. I still play it all the time um, It's it's heavy and um, it looks like a rocker bass which is kind of fun to do if you're in a country band. It throws people for a loop sometimes. I usually grab the Thunderbird if we're, if we're doing more of a rock sound. 
Um, it's got a great rock tone to it. Um, and also the way that it plays, and I don't know if it's because it's a one piece neck, I'm not really sure why, but um, you have to dig into it a little more. So it kind of forces you to play a little bit more angry, which is nice if you're playing rock tunes, I kind of feel like. But it's a good one to have in the, uh, in the stable bases. Here we have the Tower of Power, the classic MPEG SVT rig. Um, it's an 810 cabinet in a road case. Um, SVT classic head with the big tubes in it. It's heavy as all get out. If you don't have a crew or a road crew and you have to load this thing yourself, you're going to be hating life probably. <laughs> but um, I keep it pretty, pretty toned down. Um, I use the regular uh, input. It has a padded input. I've never used it. Um, keep the gain about three o'clock. I do really like the ultra high and low boosts. It gives it a little extra punch. Um, keep my bass. Uh, this is just because of my personal playing style. Um, I don't hit strings really, really hard, so I don't really need the EQ boosted way, way up. I generally boost the mids and treble some because these ampegs can tend to be on the hefty low end side. It's a solid road warrior. I mean, it's been dropped downstairs. Um, roadies have knocked it off of things before, um, but it's hanging in there. It's got a few little scars, little bumps and bruises, but um, it's a classic rig, man. You can't beat it, in my opinion. My pedal board is very simple. I don't use a lot of effects on my bass. Um, I love the Peterson strobe tuners. They're more accurate. And if you're playing festival gigs where you're in the sun, you can still see the display. A lot of the times the boss tuners or some of the um, lighted tuners are really tough to see in the sun. So I love the display and the strobe thing takes some getting used to, but once you do it, um, I feel like it's a lot more accurate and it's solid. It's also got a DI um, that I don't really use now because, speaking of DIs, um, I use a radial JDI just for my clean tone. It's like really, really good for ultra high harmonics and stuff. And then this guy, uh, the red DI, that's another one that um, is good to have if you have a crew because it's pretty heavy. But it is actually a tube driven direct box. And um, it's got a great natural transparent tone to it that you can't get out of most direct boxes. Um, it does have a tube power so it has a natural warmth to it. And since we run in-ear monitors, this is actually what I have running into my ear monitors. So just these two, I have this guy for stage volume because I'm old school and I like to have amps on stage. But I love this DI. If you can find one, get one. They're awesome. They're also great for the studio. They have a really, really killer tone. It's not like playing through a normal DI that sounds kind of thin and boring. Um, it actually sounds like a bass. Big fan of that. And this is just my uh, wireless unit for running around on stage and doing jump kicks. It's a Sennheiser. That's what we use for everybody on stage. In your monitors are always nice. Uh, these are West Tones. I've had these for quite some time. I think they are the triple drivers. So they have a great bass response. They're molded and they fit well. Um, some bass players don't like ears. Some people do. do. I think they're awesome. I love it. Uh, my ears don't ring quite as much as they used to. They preserve your hearing. And um, you can get, when you get a good mold, um, you can get whatever you want to sound, whatever you want to hear, and you can get whatever you don't want to hear. Once again, I'm Johnny Chops with the Randy Rogers Band. You can find us on the web at randyrogersband.com. We're touring all over the country. Uh, let's see, it's February right now. We'll be somewhere near you, more than likely coming up. We're on the road a bunch this spring and the summer. And um, we've got a new record in the can that hopefully will be coming out in the fall. Um, I hope. Don't quote me on that possible but we did it with Dave Cobb at RCA Studio A in Nashville which was a great experience so you should look forward to that and then on my solo front I have a record coming out it's called Johnny Chops and the Razors on March 23rd it's a blues rock record I play guitar harmonica I sing um, it's a good uh, little variety of different kinds of music all in one thing um, that comes out in March and we'll be doing some tour dates around South by Southwest in Austin and a few Texas dates along with that and if you're in L.A., I'll be playing there on April 4th at Universal Bar in North Hollywood.